Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is being held here for the reason that our caucus is being uh, partially uh, renovated and for no other reason, in case someone has a penchant to rewrite this as well. Can I say that in the campaign I saw a lot of people who are voters, but I didn't see many of you. And what's astonishing about the requests that are coming from the media at the moment is how many people turned up after the election when we couldn't affect the vote who somehow think we've got a terrible responsibility to be fulfilled where the media of this country is concerned. I regret that because it's not democracy and it's not uh, what MMP since the last 21 years has been about. I want to also say that when you see so many um, news articles and debates on television and in the media about uh, the New Zealand First leader or what New Zealand First is going to do without us being present on occasion after occasion after occasion and for month after month, you somewhat realise that something's gone wrong uh, with our democracy in terms of the fair presentation and balanced reporting. And then today in the Dom I pick up this paper and it's got an article from uh, an experienced journalist, or well, I would have thought so, who begins and in the first paragraph with respect to not being able to tell you what we're going to do it says but he's up to his old trick of keeping everyone guessing now frankly if that's the uh, value you place on journalistic integrity you go right ahead but the reality is you could point to the electoral commission and others and ask yourself why it is that 384,000 people will not have their vote counted until the 7th of October. And maybe then, with a bit of presence of mind, you could say to yourselves, that may be the reason why New Zealand First has to withhold its view, because we don't know yet what the exact, precise voice of the New Zealand people is. And certainly most not would be the case if you have 384,000, that's 15% of the vote, yet to be counted. That will change things, in my view. Uh, that's been our experience in the, part, in the past, and we want to have regard to that. Now, as for today's meeting, we met as a caucus to run through every possible permutation or option that we had. Uh, we first of all forswore as a uh, group of MPs to ensure that we didn't put our own personal views from the leader to the most uh, newest member of caucus above the interests of the party and above the interests of the country. That's what I said on election night, and that's what we're going to do. I want to tell you that we're not going to be persuaded or dissuaded by any of the speculative drivel that's been written by some of you around this country, and you should be, frankly, ashamed of yourselves. It's not true. It's utterly false. And I don't hate people, and nor do my colleagues hate people, in the seminal way some of you seem to think. You might, but we don't. We know we've got a bigger responsibility, and we're going to fulfil it whether you're going to give us a fair go in that uh, exercise or not. But what we're going to do is make a decision in the national interest when we know what the people of this country have said and in what numbers, and when, when we know with precision what we're dealing with. Because in the end, it is a, the uh, economy we're talking about and the social consequences of that economy, and that is a huge responsibility. This will be the last press conference I'm going to hold until after the 7th of October. No matter what you ask or say, I can't with any intelligence, nor can my colleagues, tell you what we're going to do until we have seen all the facts. Now, most professional people have that view of life. So, perchance, does the party called New Zealand First. Any questions? Mr. Peters, are you, or have you, or are you going to speak to either Bill English or Jacinda Ardern before the 7th? Well, it's quite possible, but I'd want to be putting uh, those caveats on any conversation with anyone, whether it be those two or anybody else, or anybody from the public for that matter. Because, frankly, that's the, uh, the circumstance that we've been delivered. We can't change that. And all I'm asking for is a bit of understanding, rather than the tripe that some people are putting out, malicious, malignant, and vicious in the extreme, uh, uh, of the nature which they were doing before the election without me being there 
and now they've continued it on. Do you see it would be a face-to-face -face meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting? Well, anything is possible. I mean, uh, I had the uh, unusual circumstance of getting in a queue this morning at the Auckland Airport to have the next person behind me, the person I've met to despise, according to one of the so-called media authorities in this country, namely Stephen Joyce. We had a brief conversation about that, of course. He was as understanding of the uh, character of the person who wrote that as I am. <laughs> well, you're not getting a free hit here, mate. Get that free hit right now. What I said I was going to do is precisely what I'm going to do, and you'll know that date is the 12th, Thursday the 12th of October. It so happens that the 7th is a Saturday. But we've got all that on train. We've been around here before a long time. We've got a rough idea what we're going to do. Maybe not as uh, highly tuned or as intelligent as you people, but we do know what we're going to do. So you do expect to have some kind of spoken talks given that um, relatively narrow time frame between Saturday and Thursday? Um, in terms of just initial discussions and maybe you know, sound, making some soundings in, in the week previous to specials? What would I sound? Their ideas, your ideas, <coughs> policy positions? But I've already, we've had a campaign, it's gone on for the last year. I know what they've said. I know what the, every other political party has said. I've got their costings. My people have got their costings. They haven't got mine, of course, because they've got them all wrong. But I've got their costings and I can produce the paper and that sets it out. What would I sound them about? I've, no, no I've, got, I've got a very, very intelligent group of people who have worked their way through everyone's manifesto, worked at all the uh, similarities, the possibilities, and where we might go. So that when we do have a meeting, we'll have a very intelligent conversation and we won't be, and you'd be grateful for this, wasting anybody's time. Just asking whether there might be some initial discussions once the negotiating teams have been established ahead of specials. Well, why would you ask a question like that? Because I'd like to know the answer. I'm still asking you, why would you, I know you'd like to know the answer, but why on earth would you ask a question like that? I don't see, I don't see, it is a totally unreasonable question. Well, I'm asking you, why would we have the discussion, and you can't tell me? Because we would like to have some Who's kind of we? idea the New Zealand public. Oh, really? We would like to have some kind of idea of the process. No, with the greatest respect, the New Zealand public don't want to be misinformed no, by mindless no, speculation. Question. Well, you asked me... Oh, no, just look, excuse me, I don't want to get into an argument with you here. All I said was, I can't talk to you aunt, until I know what the 384,000 people who have cast their vote have said. That's huge. Don't diminish it. And please don't write the kind of thing that says someone's got moral authority. For what? We're not on a first-past-the-post here. We're under MMP. And I expect the media to catch up after 21 years. Mr Peters, do you believe that the Electoral Commission should, uh, given they were so speedy with the results of election night, that they should be able to count the 384,000 before October 7th? Well, to be honest with you, I think we've got to all have a good hard look and ask ourselves, how did we trend from 2011 to 2014 to a circumstance now where in 2017 we have to wait all this time? If you want to look for blame, have a good hard look there, and then perhaps go through your recent uh, reportings and uh, musings and see how many times you wrote about that, all of you, you said instead of just blaming one person and demonising him on TV every night. You said, you've, you said you've been through all the permutations with your caucus. Is there a favoured one at this point? Yes, that's a good <laughs> You know, when you ask your caucus colleagues to put aside all their bias, and try and do what's right for the party, how would you come up with a favoured one? There are so many permutations. Guess how many there are? Two. No, you tell us. Two for you. No, there's nine permutations. It always have been. That's what we've got to face. And each one of them has to be seriously considered. Can you let us know what the nine are? Well, no, no. I'm expecting you. You're a political press gallery. You should know yourself without telling me. Because I'm reading about all your expert advice every day, and now you ask me for the most basic thing that you want to understand. Well, I'm talking to the experts now, namely you. Have you discussed who your negotiation team might be at this point? We have preliminarily put the groups together, yes, because there are specialists for various things, and that's being finalised. Are you able to say who's part of that team at this point? Sorry? Are you able to say who's part of that team at this point? Well, not quite, no. 
That was the first question over here. Which part of that did you miss? Peters, do you expect to have talks with all the other parties that are Well, this is not news of the world, right? Try and step it up here. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. No, no, I'm, just, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I have. Well, I mean, the first question I got asked was that. I answered it as clearly and succinctly as I could. Then I got asked it again. That's the kind of thing I think is not good enough. But I'm talking to you now. Okay. Well, my question was about um, how many separate negotiations you expect you may have. Would you have them? With the three parties, we expect National Greens and Labor separately, or and is there anyone else you've talked to? Well, I think they've clearly signalled, uh, both uh, Labor and National, that they want to talk to us as uh, the two old parties, so to speak. But you wouldn't have a separate talks with the Greens, say? Well, the team that they sided up with has signalled that they'd like to talk to us alone. What about so you're happy with that? Well, uh, whether I was or whether I not, whether I was or not, or not, it doesn't really matter. It's the outcome that would matter. So I'll drop the word happy and say, are you? Um, would you go along with that? Well, I just said to you at the start that that's the approach that they've both asked for, and no one in my caucus, I can tell you that, without speaking out of turn, has raised an objection to that. Uh, look, for my readings of the expert uh, advice to the public from namely yourselves, that's out of the question. So why are you raising it again? Now you've got a carrying a flag for him, are you? I mean, the, the most expensive beneficiary in the country has just lost his three quarter million dollar job. That's what you told me, so I take that as read. And I haven't heard a demur from Mr Seymour. He's, he said he's taking one for the team, even though there's, a, there's only a team of one. That's not, that's not one of the nine permutations. <laughs> Take a wild guess, come on. He ruled himself out, you've all ruled him out, so why is it being raised now? Well, I can't see the sense of holding a press conference, you're going to ask questions like that. Mr Seymour has ruled himself out, and Mr English has ruled him out. Why are you trying to raise it? In, 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 in terms of intelligently, why would you try to evoke that now? Are you happy that you're in a good position for negotiating one-on-one -on -one, sort of in terms of different policy areas or will it all be through you? So like in terms of education with Tracy Martin talking to Chris Hipkins or will it all be going through you? Well of course it's going through my negotiating team. It's never gone all through me. Can't you what you've said. Pardon? How big will your team Possibly about seven or eight. Just Mr Peters, have you, have you yet got to the bottom of who leaked the pension information? Uh, what's the next question? <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here to talk about what everybody said they wanted me to talk about was power things to do with coalition formation going on. And that's what I'm here to talk about. That's what we had a discussion about in the caucus today, and that subject didn't arise. Has your caucus defined any sort of bottom line policies that they each want to see? Look, the through? term bottom line was your phrase during the whole election. You kept it up day in, day out. It wasn't using the first phrase. It's the kind of misrepresentation that one has to live with. But we, but we survived, I have to tell you, we survived, OK? But it's not our term. Mr Peters, to use another term, are there, is there anything in that's New Zealand First policy which is non-negotiable? Well, you know, with the greatest respect, uh, are you serious? Every party has non-negotiable terms. Every party I know that's self-respecting, that's alive and survives, has got non-negotiable terms. But that's not part and parcel of this discussion. Have you discussed you have those with your about Well, you don't start a party 21 years ago, survive the third longest in this country's history since 1893, without you have non-negotiable terms. But I do not expect that to be central to this discussion. The Labour Party and the National Party and every other party is halfway intelligent enough to understand that you don't go into that sort of territory because you're going to get nowhere. Right? Look, I've heard that expression before. What expression? Rule things out. Well, like, like Jacinda Ardern has done with the United States. Look, I've heard that expression before, rule things out. That's not the smartest way to go into discussions, is it? So do you have concerns about it happening? No. Do you still want an inquiry into Dr. Jian Young? Big one? Do you still want an inquiry into Dr. Jian Young? Everybody does. Does that affect your negotiations with the National Party? 
Well, why would that be the case? He's not the National Party, he's just one member of it. Would you happy be being in a caucus with Dr Jarnia? Well, I'd wait till the end of the inquiry, wouldn't I? Then I'd be in the case of knowing what I was talking about, rather than being like some group of people, just guessing all the time. So that That's why I'd hold the inquiry. No, look, please don't come and talk to me about bottom lines for the umpteenth time. I kind of think it's a thing to do with common sense. Someone has raised some serious allegations, really serious. Those allegations, if they're not true, are defamatory and libelous. And I'm not going to let that just slide by, no. So I think an inquiry should be held. What approval would the Green Party be an obstacle for New Zealand first? We're not in a grouping with the Green Party. What a potential grouping? So if you were obviously negotiating with National versus Labour and the Greens, would the, the involvement of the Greens be any kind of obstacle for your party? Well, the reality is that the party has to consider all the permutations and that are available. And it would have occurred to you that that's one of them. Would you allow the But been, at the moment, I know the National Party is talking with the Greens. We all know that because you told me. Are you getting a sense from your members that they want? Um, change, they want to go uh, we haven't had a chance to go out to our membership, uh, but we will be doing that, and we discussed that in caucus today. Only then will we have an idea uh, as to the uh, party's feeling. Can I clarify How will you go about that? Do, you, do you mean you'll go to your members and ask them the way they're leading or inclining, or you'll go to members with the deal? No, we'll go to our members and tell them what we're dealing with. That's the first thing we're going to do, and we'll do it in the next 24 hours. What have the members been saying to you so far? Well, that's between me and them. If you want to join the party, you can be a party of that information as well. But in the meantime, that's a totally impertinent question. This is a party political matter, internal matter. You all know that. So don't try and make me look secretive by asking me a question you know I can answer. No, no party leader can answer that question. Oh, well, yeah, it gets worse. Now you want me to tell me what the emails are from my private membership are saying. That's a confidential matter. You should know that. Well, we'll back to the uh, what do you say, uh, Ms. Barnes? I'd just like to hear some answers to some questions. Yeah, well, well, ask me some sensible ones, and ones that I can answer, because I can't give you private, confidential party information. You knew that before the question was asked. I'm uh, that, you, of course you'd be struggling. You're news of the world person. That doesn't anything about facts and honesty and integrity. It shows, in your, it shows in your approach when you present this party every night. How would you communicate with your party members? Will it be um, through meetings around the country or online? Or, you know, how well, they've got meetings coming up. We've got board meetings coming up. We've going to be writing to them. We've been emailing them. Uh, that's how it'll be done. Jacinda Ray, which is all but ruled out um, allowing the Greens a freeway negotiation with all of you. Is that your request? Well, since I haven't talked to her, how could it, how could it be at my request? No, 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 stay where you are on your first question, because I expect some intelligence here. If she hasn't spoken to me and we haven't communicated, how could it be at my request? Through your chiefs of staff. Well, it's the same thing. If it, if it came with my authority, it's at my request. Well, you said you haven't talked to her. No, 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 no. Well, that's the point. I hadn't talked to her. If I was talking to, excuse me, if I was talking to my chief of staff, if he was doing it on my authority, that would be on my request. That's what authority means. Well, I'm not going to discuss that because that wasn't what was presented to the media uh, vicariously to me. Well, your, what are your policy priorities going to be in this in, in, when you kick off the negotiations? Where are you from? Australia. Yeah, it shows. Next question, please. <laughs> Don't come and ask a silly question like that. What are your policy priorities going to be? I've been around for 21 years, this party, made a whole lot of sacrifice and been demonised and cinderellaised and marginalised by everybody. And don't you come over here and start. Just come back to you. No, you know that I said there are people in the media that I seriously admire. I think they've got integrity. I think there's not enough of them. And then I'm very much concerned about the media ownership, whose behaviour through the editorials in terms of their... Uh, Malignant attitude towards New Zealand first knows no bounds. Yeah, you've read all the you've read all the editorials. Bias to beat the band, big pun. Is there anyone here at the moment that fits the bill? 
Yeah, but you know, for your, for, you, for the sake of your modesty, I can't possibly answer that question. <laughs> well, can I ask you another question? To go back to the specials. Have you, um, have you and your team analysed the specials to, to come up with any conclusions? Do you expect to win a seat, lose a seat, or how do you see them coming out, uh, falling out? It's very difficult to analyse them actually because there's not a trend between 2011 and 2017 and, and 2014. So I don't know what the trend might be now. And the worst thing out is to hear this, what I call minus university coffee bar discussion based on nothing so much as someone's bias and prejudice. You recognise what I'm talking about, don't you, don't you when I say that? But I don't want my party to do that. It's a waste of our time. But you, in the past, um, the trend has been that you've lost slightly on specials. Do you, do you think that, that trend may change? Well, actually, that wasn't a trend in 2014. Um, we actually went that way. Got with, we got, no, we got within nine votes of getting another seat. You got that part wrong. I'll go and check. Please do. But I got, but I, I got it here with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just in case I was running into you, I bought it. Well, you have to have regard to what your caucus colleagues say. We're voters at caucus and as a board, together in the end, not just a decision of one group. And that board will have been speaking right across the country to our membership, and that'll take some time. But it'll be well in the time of getting a feel for things before we start getting the hard copy on the hard news of the 7th of October. Would you expect to go back to the membership once you have finalised a deal in terms of getting an endorsement from them? No, that's not in our constitution. Quite the contrary, the constitution trusts the board and the MPs to make the decision. Would you take any feedback from party donors? No. We're not like the rest. You can't buy us off, all right? That's why we didn't have all those millions in this campaign. I might have seems to be sort of rather trite as far as you guys are concerned, but it actually is a disgraceful uh, 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 development in New Zealand politics. Are you considering asking for an initial deal in the same For what? Are you considering asking for an initial deal Well, I won. Stacey Kirk wrote that down the other day, and I was actually alarmed to see it. Uh, no, no, not, uh, not Stacey Kirk, sorry. Sorry, not Stacey Kirk. Uh, another journalist wrote that down the other day about that deal and how it was serious because we didn't have one. I can't believe that a person would write that actually, given that we've prided ourselves in never ever doing any deal with any other political party. And to suggest it as they did in the last three days, and I'm trying to remember the article which was written, is in my view just plain grubby journalism. I have never asked for a deal and never will. It's the reason why we're standing up for in front of you today as the party that is where it is of all those new parties. When can you say you've never asked for a deal and you're going into coalition negotiations? Well, this is a deal before the election for electoral seats, which is what the question was. Okay. That's when I can say that. All right. Thank you very much. I've got some data here I can share with you on the way. <laughs> <laughs> now write about it. I'm not even seeing anything else.